Hey everyone! Welcome back to Cap Tech, where we explore the fascinating intersections of technology, history, and travel. I'm your new host, Janie Rutenkruch. I'm so happy that Cap Tech chose me for this job. I am Cap Tech's number one fan. I think of him like a big vanilla desert. I mean, seriously guys, check out the links below to buy some of Josh Kappelman's books, or his new musical album. The man is simply amazing, and in this gal's opinion, he's one of the most underrated creators and artists of his generation. Could Little Egypt have really stood alone as its own entity? Let's explore the history and speculation behind this possibility. Southern Illinois, often called Little Egypt, has always had a distinct identity. Culturally and politically, this region has long stood apart from the rest of Illinois. But could it have become its own state? The idea isn't as far-fetched as it might seem. To understand the roots of this idea, we need to go back to the early days of Illinois statehood. When Illinois became a state in 1818, its southern region was the most populated and economically developed. With its rich farmland and strategic river access, southern Illinois was a vital part of the new state. In the early 19th century, southern Illinois was the heart of the state's economy, thanks to its fertile land and proximity to the Ohio and Mississippi rivers. Settlers from the South poured into the region, bringing with them their cultural traditions, economic practices, and in some cases, enslaved people. This Southern influence set Little Egypt apart from Northern regions, which were more closely aligned to Northern states like Ohio and Indiana. As Illinois grew, the balance of power began to shift North. The construction of the Illinois and Michigan Canal and the rise of Chicago as a commercial hub led to a booming population in the northern part of the state. This shift in power created tensions between the northern and southern regions, with southern Illinois often feeling overlooked and underrepresented. These tensions occasionally boiled over into discussions about secession. Some residents of southern Illinois felt that their region's unique needs and interests were being ignored by the state government in Springfield. The idea of forming a separate state was proposed more than once, though it never gained enough traction to become a reality. The Civil War brought these regional tensions to the forefront. Southern Illinois, with its deep ties to the South, was a hotbed of divided loyalties. While the region remained loyal to the Union, the cultural divide between North and South in Illinois was never more apparent. Cairo, Illinois, at the southern tip of the state, became a key Union military outpost, but not everyone in the region was happy about it. The war exacerbated existing divisions, and after the conflict ended, the idea of Southern Illinois becoming its own state resurfaced. However, by this time, the political and economic power had shifted so far north that any serious movement toward statehood was unlikely. After the war, Southern Illinois faced economic challenges as its agricultural economy struggled to compete with the industrialized north. The region's isolation grew, and so did the sense that its needs were being neglected by the state government. Despite this, the idea of forming a separate state remained mostly speculative. Fast forward to the present day, and the idea of Southern Illinois becoming its own state is still occasionally discussed, though more as a thought experiment than a serious political movement. But why does this idea persist, and what would it mean for Southern Illinois to go it alone? Some argue that Southern Illinois' unique culture and economic needs would be better served by a government closer to home. The region's economy, still heavily reliant on farming and mining, faces different challenges than the more urban and industrialized northern part of the state. Proponents of statehood suggest that a separate southern Illinois could focus on policies tailored to its specific needs. But what would a state of southern Illinois look like? It would likely be one of the smaller states in terms of both population and GDP, but with rich natural resources and a deep sense of community. The region's cultural identity, shaped by its southern roots and rural character, would likely play a central role in its governance. Of course, the challenges of secession would be immense. The hurdles of forming a new state are significant, and it's unlikely that the residents of southern Illinois would ever reach the level of consensus needed to make it happen. Southern Illinois has always been a place apart, a region with its own story, culture, and challenges. While the idea of statehood may remain a dream, it's a powerful reminder of how history, geography, and identity shape the way we see the world. If you enjoyed this video, make sure to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you don't miss out on our next adventure. 
and let me know in the comments what hidden histories are lurking in your local area. I'd love to hear your stories. Until next time, this is CapTech signing off. In the land of little Egypt, where the rivers divide, a new dawn's rising with southern pride. From Cairo to Carbondale, the voices ring clear. Southern Illinois is stepping out of the rear. May the 51st state stand in tall and free. From the Shawnee Hills to the Ohio Sea. We're carving our path, making history. Southern Illinois, where the future will be. Coal mines, farmland, the heart of our home. We built it together from limestone to loam. Now we're breaking the chains from the old ties that bind. Southern Illinois, with a new state of mind. State standing tall and free From the Shawnee Hills to the Ohio Sea We're carving our path, making history Southern Illinois, where the future will be We've got the spirit, the strength to stand with a star on the flag, we'll make our demand.